Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Uh, recently, we took a look at these, uh, this TechPower uh, TP3005T uh, power supply. Uh, we played with the controls, unboxed it, etc. And there was not a whole lot to fault the supply on. Yes, there is kind of a chemical smell to it but it's really not that bad and honestly what I think is it's like a rust inhibitor that they put inside this so because they cranked out a million of these units and then they sit in the warehouse somewhere and then they sell them at a really really cheap price uh, the other thing is these binding posts here are kind of on the cheap side but again it's a really cheap power supply so the, while it's a fault we can't truly uh, fault them on it. Uh, today we're gonna do a teardown and we're gonna see, first of all, if we can move these binding posts around. Did they just run wires to them or is there actual board sitting back there and the binding posts go into the board? Well, semi, let's go with semi-permanently. Something I did forget to mention is one thing that the supply lacks is a, a soft off. Uh, higher end supplies, you turn on the supply, and then you have an output on off button. Something that's commonly annoying about those kinds of supplies is when you do power them off, uh, the voltage and uh, the voltage will reset to zero and the current will reset to the uh, highest level. With this supply, it actually has non-volatile memory inside, which will store your last uh, setting. Uh, last time I, uh, before I undid the cord, I set the supply to uh, five volts and uh, half an amp. So let's plug in the supply, power it up, and see what we get. There we go, and let's power her up. See, what I really like about the supply is it actually shows you what your presets are, particularly when you power it on. So as you saw, it was five volts and half an amp. Now that we've got some of our pleasantries out of the way, uh, let's just take a quick uh, look around the supply. The supply is pretty light. Uh, for its capabilities compared to the Deltron supply we looked at uh, recently. Uh, this thing is, you know, a, a featherweight. That Deltron supply, you, was, you had to use almost two hands to lift it. So th the construction is pretty decent. There are some kind of sharp corners, but again, the supply is built down to a price. As you can see, there's no, uh, any kind of communication on this, no LAN, no USB, no GPAB. Again, not something you'd find in a supply of this quality. We do have a fan back here, which I do believe blows out. And then down here we have our standard uh, power connector with a fuse. This supply looks like it only works at 100 and, you know, 110 volts, 60 hertz. There's no, there's no switch to change to different sides. Well, this handle is nice and loud. I, I'm sure you heard that on the video. Well, now let's uh, pull the cover off and uh, take a peek inside. The supply has about a dozen screws going all the way around the case on both sides. Uh, they are self-tappers, so they just screw into the uh, steel frame of the case, cutting their own threads. Not super high quality, but again, Got to remember that this thing is uh, built down to a price. And the handle is just attached to the outer shell. If I grab the handle, the side slides right off and we're in. Inside the supply is decently roomy. If we look up here, there are rails that run from the back to the front to hold everything together. It, it, it's not perfect, but it gives you more confidence than the supplies that have where this front panel is not actually attached up here. Uh, taking a closer look at some stuff, uh, these are our main uh, power lines that run from the uh, 
plug back here all the way to the front and this little board here contains your uh, main power switch which appears to be an actual you know clunking power switch it's not a, a soft on off where this thing will uh, uh, idle in like a low power mode taking a look at the uh, input connector here as I mentioned the uh, the lines going from the back of the switch all the way to the uh, sorry at the back of the connector all the way to the switch up front have these little jackets on them to kind of reduce any uh, possible uh, chafing or anything uh, we do have a, a decent ground lead here and it comes down to a little stud which uh, yeah there's no uh, screw underneath so it's welded to the uh, chassis here I did take a look there is a uh, shake proof washer there and they applied a little bit of uh, like locking thread compound etc so this thing doesn't come loose we have a nice uh, crimped connection here so all of this looks uh, like it's it's doing the business. You know, they didn't skimp on the uh, safety. Taking a look at the front switch here, we have a little circuit board that lives on top of the switch here, which the lines that come in from the uh, connector in the back. It looks like really the only purpose of this uh, uh, board here is that the lines come up to the board jump over to the switch you can kind of see the connections underneath there and then from the switch come back out to the transformer that this brown wire and this blue wire go off to the transformer uh, they did put a little capacitor underneath there uh, this is probably for uh, power line filtering or maybe uh, some power factor correction for the transformer Looking at the transformer, this isn't the the best or worst transformer that I've seen. Uh, it's got uh, four bolts that uh, hold the laminations together, and then that's got some bracketry that holds the transformer down to the uh, bottom of the power supply. The bolts that hold the lamination together here uh, do have some, like, glue or adhesive on them probably to uh, reduce the uh, vibrations because uh, some transformers do have a tendency to sing and kind of sticking them together uh, helps to reduce that uh, these are the main power lines coming in from the switch right here and then these are all these are the it looks like three different taps that come out of the transformer for the the multiple voltage ranges uh, uh, I didn't notice this right away, but if we uh, take a closer look right here, we, oh, sorry about that, uh, we see our first bit of cheesiness here. Uh, instead of going from a, from the transformer to a connector, it looks like the, the, the pins from the transformer are in essence just directly soldered onto what the connector is going to be so these are these are not removable they did put some heat shrink over them which is better than nothing but uh apparently it's they couldn't either couldn't afford the connector or just you know couldn't get it in time which uh here's the other little bit of cheesiness uh it looks like the the heat sink for the board which we'll take a closer look on is directly attached to the fan here and it's not tightened down all the way so you can you can sort of see that it's it's a little loose uh, it might be kind of hard to hear uh, looking at the other side of the transformer here like that uh, this is going to be the power taps the lower voltage power taps coming off of the transformer because it's really easy just to, to wind another set of taps on the uh, secondary and this goes off to power the electronics in the uh, front panel here looking at our uh, power board here which is in the back so right here is the fan then we have the heatsink which is bolted directly to the fan and as we saw it 
it's a little actually I think that's a better view it's actually kind of loose on here there's no rubber isolation so if the fan is loud you know everything will be loud uh, this is the wire that runs the fan here and we already saw this uh, shady connector here uh, back here what you'll see are uh, two relays uh, these are the relays that will select which power taps to use and let me see if i can get a a good view of it right down here you can see kind of between the boards back there that is the um, bridge rectifier so once the uh AC power comes out of the transformer here, the relays will select uh, which taps they want, which selects your voltage, then that bridge rectifier then rectifies that to DC, and we have some big old capacitors uh, in the back there. Something else to note from this view is if you look right here, this little device that has these wires coming to it right here is a temperature sensor. Uh, probably like an NTC, uh, something like that, or a PTC. Uh, the, this temperature sensor is, they have it screwed directly to the heatsink here. So this power supply can actually sense the temperature of the heatsink and control the speed of the fan. It doesn't just uh, turn the fan on at uh, different loads. Let me see if I can show this. If you very carefully look at the resistors that are sitting right here, this resistor seems to be bent over and kind of touching those two. Uh, maybe somebody grabbed it during assembly or something like that. It really should be sitting kind of like that to space them out. Showing you a little better uh, view of the board here. Uh, for shipping purposes, you can see that the connector does have some black elastic type stuff on it so it doesn't uh, jar loose during shipping which is a nice touch. Uh, something else to note, and let me see if I can show that to you. See these holes in the board? There's one here, there's one under there, and there is a third one. Uh, it's really hard to see from this angle. It's actually right down here. Uh, what those holes are, are the, uh, as we saw, the bridge rectifier and the uh, uh, pass transistors are screwed into this heatsink. And to make that easier, these holes, actually, you can kind of see the screw down there, allow you to stick a screwdriver through the hole to screw them down. They're not just clamped to the heatsink by the board, they're actually screwed in place. Looking at the other side of the power board here, we can see the bridge rectifier down there, and you can see the little screw that's holding it in place. And up here we have a two... Uh, pass transistors. You can also see the screws holding them in place. Uh, what I wanted to mention is it's not clear whether this is a one quadrant supply or a two quadrant supply. It's possible that both of those pass transistors are in uh, parallel to give the supply a little more current capacity and to kind of share the heat load between them. But it's also possible that one of those is the series pass element for the output and the other one is the pass element for the sink. Looking at the capacitors here, these are the output capacitors. They're uh, 2200 microfarad. They're pretty beefy. Uh, they are 105, volt, 105 degrees C. So theoretically they're of a higher quality, but I don't outright recognize the uh, uh, markings of the, the brand, the I with like a C in it. The, you know, they're not the higher quality uh, capacitors of like a, a niche chemicon. Now taking a look at the binding posts back here. The binding posts are right up here and uh, they come through the case here and go into the uh, this little uh, circuit board right here. So the first thing we see is that no we can't swap the uh, location of the binding posts. Uh, they are fixed. Uh, but we could exchange these for higher quality binding posts because the connection here seems to be a fairly common one. Taking a look at the little board here, uh, this red wire and black wire here are the outputs from the power board that we saw on the back there. Uh, there are some filter capacitors here. Uh, 
We'll take a look at the valley here in a second. Maybe I could get a better shot at it. Uh, then we have the uh, reverse uh, connection protection diode right down here. Nice, big, beefy one here. Then we have, uh, these are going to be our current sensing elements. You know, they've got, it, they've got them separated out to uh, share the heat load. And it kind of looks like this wire right here is going to be the sensing uh, element. So we get the, you know, to do like a four wire sense across the, uh, these uh, resistors. Uh, this yellow wire right here, yellow with a green stripe, is your ground connection for that center post. They do have it screwed to the case here and it does have a shake proof washer on it and they did put some uh, goop on there so it doesn't come apart in shipping. Not terrible. The capacitors that we see down here are uh, 50 volt, uh, 220 microfarad, 105 C. Same brand as the ones we saw back on the power supply. Taking a look at the uh, control board here, our main micro is a PIC16F877. Uh, uh, this is probably doing all of the uh, controls. It's also outputting it to the display on the front. It's going to be reading your encoders for the knobs and uh, uh, turning the uh, outputs on and off. Moving from the chip, over here we have a uh, five pin connector. This is probably the programming connector for this micro here. Uh, kind of following the lines that come out of it up, we have a 74HC595D. Uh, this is a NXP part. Uh, this is a, a eight bit serial in or parallel serial or parallel out shift register with output latches. You can see that there's a whole bank of resistors right here and we, the LCD, dis uh, I guess LED display, the, the digits are gonna be attached right here. Most likely this is being used as a, a output multiplexer where this chip will transmit what it wants the screen to show and there are actually two of these further up here and both of those look like they're tied into the display here. Again another capacitor from that brand I don't recognize and you can see this blue wire here. This is the wire that goes down to the current sensing that we looked at previously. Then we have uh, the little buzzer. Moving down from our uh, processor here, down here we have some uh, Texas instrument parts, a TL082C. Uh, I will look what that up is in a minute. If we look down here, this section right here is dedicated to the encoders on the front that uh, these, these big connections here and here and the, the little guys on top are gonna be your rotary encoder and your uh, button. So it's possible that these guys are related to that. But if we look further down here, we have this really weird looking section. Again, the section is powered by the, uh, that same uh, eight bit uh, serial in, uh, serial or parallel out shift register. Uh, let me see if I can get a good view of this. If you look right back there, see that connector right there with the, that connector is the uh, connector that goes from the board uh, with the binding posts out. And it kind of looks like that uh, connection is used uh, to feed this setup. What I'm thinking is that instead of uh, using the A to D's that are built into the uh, uh, pick, instead they're using a whole bunch of uh, voltage 
dividers in like a, a ladder setup where uh, the uh, this chip here, uh, this this array of chips, there's actually four of them across here. Let me see if I can see one, two, three, four. And that uh, they're using this as like a, a big ladder and they are able to go through and read off uh, in a serial stream, read off where the uh, voltage is at. This tends to be a lot faster than actually using the internal A to Ds of the chip because you have to uh, select your voltage range because obviously the, the pick uh, chip can't go all the way up to the 32 volts that this thing will output. So then you have to have uh, sensing for your uh, ranges, etc., which adds more logic. In this sense, all you do is you just pull in the serial stream, look for where the transition happens from uh, a zero to a one, and that dictates your voltage. Again, possibly uh, that's why they're using it. This, uh, the, you know, that's the best thing I could come up with. Also. If we take a closer look right here, we do have some uh, bodginess here that there's actually several resistors uh, stacked on top of each other and soldered together. Looking here at the top of the board, uh, this wire right here is the input. Uh, the, that blue wire I mentioned from the uh, binding post board uh, downstairs. Again, we see that they put a little uh, Solastic on the connectors here. This is the fan connector. And uh, these are the control and sense lines from the uh, board back there. The connector that's hiding under here is the input from the transformer. And we have the power section right down here. Taking a look at the power section, again, we see the same brand capacitors that we did before, and it's decently tidy. Nothing really jumps out, and so far we only really saw one bodge, so this is, this is actually designed reasonably well. So this has been a look at the uh, Tech Power uh, TP3005T uh, power supply. Again, this thing is a really, really built down to a price, but at that price, it's actually not bad. There's some bodginess. Like I said the, this heatsink is a little loose, uh, but we do have actual thermal protection. And from what I looked in the manual, this does have a thermal cutout as well. Maybe that's what that is that it's a like a bimetallic uh, sensing element this connector right here is not a connector at all they just sire, uh, soldered the wires directly on they which is not great they did heat shrink them though so uh props to that we did see a little uh bodge uh resistor down here where there were a couple of them stacked together but overall this thing's not bad the grounding connections look pretty decent uh, something I didn't mention previously, there is actually a little metal plate right here that the switch bolts to, and then that metal plate bolts to the front chassis, front, you know, the plastic case. They didn't have to do that. There are, you know, you, they could have screwed it directly into the plastic, so that does increase the quality just a little bit. So you'll get, you know, a whole bunch of cycles from the switch turning on and off without it, you know, pushing inside. I mean, again, for for the price, I would definitely give the supply a thumbs up. It it does the business. It you know, it regulates. It seems to uh, function as prescribed, and you know it does not look like it's going to you know catch on fire after you use it for a couple of days. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you're always welcome to uh, put them down below, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up.